from Glen Eagles. This station is just a little bit different. It was built in 1924, 60 years after the railway line first opened, to give the rich and famous visitors to the Grand Glen Eagles Hotel a good impression at the start to their visit. Glen Eagles is still a luxurious resort, surrounded by hundreds of acres of wonderful countryside. It hit the headlines in 2005, when politicians from across the globe gathered here for the G8 summit. It's a popular resort for golfers too, and the prestigious Ryder Cup competition between the USA and Europe takes place here in 2014. The end of the last ice age, around 13,500 years ago, created an undulating landscape which became the perfect setting for the world-famous Glen Eagles golf course. Rivers once flowed both under and within the ice, producing a network of sand and gravel mounds and ridges. Then there are the meltwater channels and the distinctive basins which are formed from huge blocks of melting ice left behind by retreating glaciers. It's an ideal environment for more than just golf. This free-draining ground can support many different plants, insects, animals and birds. The estate managers at Glen Eagles, like those at many other golf courses across Scotland, are keen to conserve and enhance the natural assets of the area. Golf may be the focus here, but players and visitors can also enjoy an array of wildlife in the copses and woods, the open water, the wetlands and the rough lands, which are all important features of the course. Take, for example, the gorse, with its sharp thorns and bright yellow flowers. It thrives in the wilder parts of this landscape, providing a fantastic refuge and perch for small birds. You might spot a yellowhammer with its easily identifiable repetitive song, or a male stone chat with orange-red breast and black cap. The yellow flowers of the gorse fill the air with their coconut fragrance for months and months, attracting insects, moths and other invertebrates. When few other plants are in flower, this shrub offers a great source of sugary nectar. As you leave Glen Eagles behind, you'll pass through the rich farmlands of Strathairn. Nearby, the meandering River Earn is gradually making its way towards the Firth of Tay. This is an intensely managed agricultural landscape, but at certain times of year, it attracts huge numbers of migrants from afar. The incomers are pink-footed geese, and they come all the way from Greenland and Iceland. If you're travelling through here in the winter months, you may well see huge flocks of these geese in the fields on either side of the railway line. They'll be grazing on the grass or winter cereals and taking spilt grain from amongst the stubble. Even after many years of studying them, the ornithologist Roy Dennis is still mesmerised by their coming in the thousands, flock after flock, to stay here from September or October until they return to their summer lands to breed in April or May. Perthshire is one of the special places for pink pitted geese. They come down in very large numbers from Iceland and Greenland for the winter time. They arrive in September and feed on the fields that have recently been harvested for cereals and they pick up the, the barley that's fallen on the ground. And they stay with us until April before they go north. I love seeing them come down and seeing them fly around in these huge flocks, maybe sometimes thousands, seeing a flock of... 15,000 pink-footed geese, or even larger numbers, going to roost at Loch Leven. <laughs> 